Hi right, hey there, I'm Red. Welcome back to the shop. And this week, uh, I'm going to start off with a series of videos on building out your shop, the best bang for the buck at different price points. And I'm going to try and make this a, a reoccurring series of videos. Before we go down that route, though, a lot of guys have been asking for a shop tour of the space that I had set up. So we're going to go over basically what I had to give you an idea to the mentality that the bear uses when when putting together his cave. Today's episode brought to you by me. <laughs> if no one else is going to sponsor it, I might as well. So check out the Home Distillers Workbook, your guide to making moonshine, whiskey, vodka, rum, and so much more. Let's talk about the workshop that I had set up and gotten just how I like it, of course, right before I moved. And this is it. And what we got here is uh, your average 22 by 22 foot square two car garage. Um, and that, that's the average best case scenario for most of you guys in your shop is you're going to have is what you're going to have is you're going to have a garage to work with, hopefully a two car garage. Yeah. There's some guys who are working out of a, a, a shed out back. There's some guys working in basements. I've seen shops set up in bedrooms and such, um, you know, to, to each their own, you, you work with what you got. Uh, but typically you're going to have for most of the shops that I see, it's a, a two-car garage setup. So what we have here is a an averaged out two-car setup. Up at the top is the entryway to your house. Over to the right-hand side, there's a door to the side yard. Down at the bottom, you got your two-car roll roll-up door. Let's go around clockwise here, clockwise, clock clockwise, clockwise, and and talk about what you know what I had set up in the shop. Uh, I and also understand that almost everything in my shop was on wheels. And it's because I'd like to be able to switch my shop up depending on the project that I'm doing. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But anyway, so I had a workbench. I had my, my welder cart. I had a big four by four work table. I had my dust collection. I had my miter saw and my table saw. And as you see, I got all my really, you know, dust creating devices over there next to the dust collector. Then down at the bottom there, and it, it maybe seemed kind of weird. I had a bench set up that had a, a bench sander, a scroll saw, and a grinder on it. And the reason that looks odd is because that was a bench I made set up on the sawhorse portion, I, I mean, that's what I call it, of a uh, Shopsmith Mark V. If you don't know what a Shopsmith Mark V is, it's the Swiss Army knife of shop tools. It converts from a vertical drill press into a horizontal boring machine, into a lathe, into a table saw, into a disc sander. And then it's got every attachment you could ever imagine you could snap on, uses the power transfer. In fact, <laughs> if you look behind me, over, over my head, <laughs> that's it. That's a shopsmith. It is a really cool tool. Any of you guys who are like stuck in a single car garage or something really small, I suggest maybe looking into one. And that's what I did. Uh, then as I got I got into the bigger shop, I took over the two-car garage. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, the wife went away for a week. He came back and I had moved all the stuff from the two-car garage into the one-car garage. And <laughs> she looked at me like, what happened? I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I've always been here. <laughs> anyway, so in this setup, I had it set up as a dedicated drill press. So I just built a box to set on top of the uh, the sawhorse portion, if you would, of the, the backside of it. And I used it as a bench. And it was really useful like that. Next to it, I actually ended up uh, getting a dedicated uh, horizontal, not horizontal, <laughs> floor standing drill press, a Harbor Freight. Uh, I think it's a 17-inch. And I, I think I may have talked about it before. I got a screaming deal on that thing. It was... Right after the holidays last year, there was a bunch of returns, and I walked in and I got this thing, I think $125 or something. It was ridiculous. It's a $400 drill press. Uh, next to that, I have my bandsaw, my grizzly. Oh, I love that thing. I miss it so much. And my tool cards next to that, lumber up on the side, my, uh, my long lumber up top, and then I had my sheet lumber un underneath that. And next to that, I had one of those $100 uh, Stanley tool carts, you know, the ones they have for sale and around the holidays every year for a hundred bucks. And that was my metal working tools. I don't have a lot of them, but that's, I kept them all over there to keep them, you know, apart. 
Then my CNC table, my CNC table, by the way, was, was kind of a clone of my work table. Uh, then next to that, I had my, uh, my small uh, drill press, the bench model from Harbor Freight. And I had found, I got my hands on a little rolling cart that was about four feet high. And I bolted that drill press to the top of that cart. Boy, that thing, it made it so useful. I would use that on almost every project. Uh, next to that, I had a desk. And, and that desk, it was actually like uh, the desk you get out of a cubicle. One of those little corner pieces had no legs on it. And I built a cantilever system uh, to just attach it to the wall. And by, and by cantilever, I mean, literally, I took some two by four scrap pieces, bolted them to the wall with just enough space for the desk to wedge between it and slid it in there. And that's it. And it's great. It's rock steady. And because it's essentially the way it's set up in a cubicle and there's no legs on it, which gives you a ton of space for other stuff. And then I had shelves built up around that whole area, had all my shelves and stuff, had my charging cart next to it. And that's where I had all my chargers for all my tools. There was a, a little uh, cart, one of those like little tiny baker's rack carts. And I had power strip uh, zip tied to that with an extension cord. And I had all my power tools on that so I could wheel them anywhere else. And then right next to that where it says CPU is, I actually had a server rack. I got my, my paws on a, uh, a, a used server rack for free. And I don't know if I recommend it to everybody. But for me, what I did was I put my 3D, uh, my 3D printer in there. I put uh, a CPU in there. Uh, that, that's the heart of your computer. That's the box. And then I ran a cable over to the desk and had a monitor mounted to the wall. It was my keyboard and stuff over there. But that CPU, I could use it for looking stuff up on Google and checking into stuff. Uh, I had it running my CNC. It was the, you know, all the electronics for the CNC were mounted in there. I had uh, an Amazon Echo device in there. Uh, I had uh, speakers uh, uh, set up on top of that. Anyway, and as I was talking about before, the whole point of my shop was modularity. What I find a lot of guys doing is they're really adverse to putting anything in front of that garage door. They don't want to block that. <laughs> It, it, it has this, this feeling that if I put something there, then I can't get stuff in and out of the garage. Well, if you notice, as I said, everything's on wheels. So anytime I needed to move anything, I could just roll it over. So typically when I was working on a project, you know, I'd pull the table saw over. You know, I had that Delta table saw. Boy, that thing was so easy to move. Once you, you kick uh, that little wheel stand down, it would just, it would glide. I could drag that over. And I got my work table right there I'd use as an outfeed table. And I can work on my table saw. Or, you know, here's a setup I had recently. I was working on a project. You know, the I had my set up my, my work stool there in the center. And I'd have the drill press and the small drill press, you know, chucked up with, you know, two different bits. Uh, I have my, my miter saw out with the wings up, my tool cart right behind me, and my project piece on the work table. Anytime I needed to get a new tool, I didn't have to stop what I was doing, walk across the shop, you know, open up a cabinet and get a piece out. I just spin around and grab the tool. It's right there. You know, that was my setup. And as I said, you know, I've gotten rid of almost all of this. So I got to rebuild all of this. So you're going to see along the ways how we do this. Right now I'm in, uh, we've rented a house here in Vegas because uh, the housing market is insane. <laughs> These people lost their mind. I had somebody tell me, some realtor, oh, you better buy now because the prices are just going to go up and they're never going to come down ever again. Ever. <laughs> All right, so that's where we are now. We're in the two-car garage here out here in Vegas, and we're going to be rebuilding the old shop, hopefully bigger, badder, and better than ever. Also, stay tuned for the, the guides for the, the budget shop build. So stay tuned. Again, you know, thanks for sticking. Really? Thanks for sticking with us through the whole move and everything. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and as always, shine on.